Greetings gamers! In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a Fortnite thumbnail. I've been requested to make this video, so here I am, delivering on that. To make thumbnails, I use Photoshop, but the tips I'm going to be showing you can really be used with any software. There are lots of free alternatives you can use on mobile or also on computer. The size of YouTube thumbnails is 1280 pixels by 720 pixels, so that's what you should probably be using for the size. I'm going to start off by showing you the process I use to make thumbnails, and then after that I'm going to go a bit more into details on tips and tricks you should use when making Fortnite thumbnails. Things to make your thumbnail pop a bit more and seem a bit more vibrant and whatnot. First you're going to want to get the main images of your thumbnail, and to do this I use Fortnite replays. You can go into a creative match or a battle labs and pose in a certain way with a certain item. I might just do something involving Iron Man with the drum gun because this isn't actually for a real thumbnail, it's not like it really matters too much, but of course for the video you're making a thumbnail for, make the thumbnail related around the video. A lot of the time, you're going to want to position it so your character in the thumbnail isn't in the direct center. It being off to the side gives you a lot of space to work on the other side with adding things like text or like another picture or something along those lines. So in this case, I'm going to have Iron Man on the left, then I'll have something else here on the right. Once you get it all positioned right, if you're on PC, I don't think this applies to console. If you're on PC, you're going to want to go into your settings and change your settings to epic so it looks cleaner and more realistic and whatnot. And turn off show FPS so that doesn't cover part of the screen. Now, it might do something like this when it first does it, and that's just because of the way your camera settings might be set up. Once you go under here in the camera, you can change a lot of settings in here. You're going to want to go to right here and make sure you have high quality effects turned on because it just makes everything look a little bit nicer. If I were you, I would just copy these settings, but if you don't want them to be exactly like this, you can do it however you want. Then back under the first thing, you're going to want auto exposure on, otherwise, it could really make things look not so great like this, unless you want to mess with it and make it to your specifics, but I think it usually looks best if you turn it on. For focal length, usually it's best to have it a little bit higher instead of being closer to the character. It looks a little bit more cinematic in my experience, but if you don't like it that way, you can just do it however you want really, but I think it looks best like this. For aperture, it really kind of depends on the picture, but what this means is just how blurry the background will be compared to your foreground. So as you can see, it changes how changes the blurriness of it. I usually like it a little bit more on the lower end so that the background's a little bit more blurry. You should have autofocus off. You can just adjust this until your main character is in focus. In this case, Reaper Mode is glitching out a little bit and for some reason the gunshot decided to cut across Iron Man's face. So I'm just gonna rewind a little bit and then try to pause it again at the right moment. And once you have it all set up like this, you can just press this eye right here and it will turn off all of that. Now you can take a screenshot of this once you have your screenshot taken, if you're on PC, it should just be saved somewhere on your computer, maybe in your downloads. For me, it saves to a captures folder I have. If you're on a console, you're going to want to transfer that from your console to whatever device you're making the thumbnail on. The best way to do that might be through the Xbox or PlayStation app. I'm not really too sure how those work, but I don't think it should be too hard to transfer it. Once you're done with taking this picture though, you can of course just put your settings back to how you like them. Now that we're done actually taking the main picture for the thumbnail, we can go back into Photoshop, press File, Place Embedded, you can find it wherever it's saved to, and then you just place it. If you're on any other software, it shouldn't be too hard to import the picture. Once you have it in, you can of course rescale it however you like it to be. I might make it a little bit more zoomed in on Iron Man, like that. Now we can start to add like text and images to make it pop a bit more and explain a bit more about what the video is about. Now to do this, I found a good pack that contains a lot of good text files and images and whatnot to add to your thumbnail that can really make it significantly better. So I'm going to link the video by the guy who made that in the description. It's free. You can just download it and just get all the assets to use for yourself. There is also a mobile download for it, I'm pretty sure, that's shown in that video. So you can also do it through that. Once you download it, it should be in your downloads folder and you can just open it up. And if you're in Photoshop, you should have two tabs up here now. One from your thumbnail you're making and one from the other thing. Now this has a ton of stuff inside of it you can use to make your thumbnail significantly better. There's a lot of color correction you can add. There are tons of things like different borders you can add. There's arrows you can put in. These speed lines, which I highly recommend using. I think it makes thumbnails look a lot better, but that's just my opinion. You don't have to use them if you don't want to. Different dividers. And of course, there's a ton of 3D renders you can use. If you don't want to use replay shots, you can instead use any of these. There are a ton of them. The list just 
goes on forever. There are literally hundreds of them you can use. 228 to be exact. And I'm pretty sure this is updated decently often, so there should be more added in the future, I think. But there's a lot to choose from. There are emojis, if you'd like to use those for any reason. Now, this is one of the most important ones, for me at least, is the text styles. You get all these different presets for your text, which look really clean. You can just edit them and say whatever you want. There's also different kill logos. A loading screen thing, if you want your thumbnail to look like a loading screen. Arena points. Now this, this is very important. I use this one a lot. This one is very useful because you can change it. So instead of just saying new, it can say like really anything you want. There's a victory royale banner. Different name tags where you can add the names of them. A game mode thing, we can also change the name of the game mode. This next one is also very important. It's a new weapon thing. You can change out the weapon inside of it. You can also make it so it doesn't say new right there. If you want your little arrow thing to say something else, you can always change that out too. There's a kill message. There's Fortnite standings. You can change an entire Fortnite cup stats and all that stuff. You can change out all of the names, all of the points, just all of it. There's a V-Bucks tab where you can change out any of the numbers to whatever you want. And there's a really good one right here, which is backgrounds. If you want to change out the background of any of your images, you can do that. Also, if you're using the renders, you can put the render in front of any one of these images. And these images are very good, actually, for putting the renders in front of. Getting any one of these from this Photoshop document over to your thumbnail document is not hard at all. Just pick the one you want, so for this example I'm going to start off by adding in this new weapon one into this. You just right click right here, then you go up and you click on duplicate group, or if it's not a group, if it's just one layer, so for example if you're just trying to duplicate just the word new, it'll say duplicate layer, but in this case it's duplicating an entire group, so you click duplicate group, and you can change the name of it if you want, but it doesn't really matter too much. And then right here under document, you want to click on this and change it to whatever the name of your thumbnail is that you're working on. So for me, it's just thumbnail tutorial thingy. You select that and then you just do OK. If you switch back over to the tab of the thumbnail you're working on, it should just be placed in there. You can resize it however you want and just put it where you want it to be. So I think for this, I'll put this like right here. I'm going to bring over a few other things I want to use for this thumbnail too. If you're bringing over one of the text styles, be sure to select the exact text style you want. So for this one, I want to bring over just number two, which would be the one selected if I click on number two. I'll have to click on just number two, not the folder, just the number two. And you can duplicate that over. So for this, I'm gonna make a thumbnail as if the drum gun came back, which it didn't actually, but I'm just using it as an example for right now. So I'm just gonna add the text to say drum gun. You can resize it, whatnot, and put it down where you'd like. I think I'll put it right here. I'm going to move the thing that says new over here, and I actually want to change what it says. So if you click the little down arrow right next to where it says new, if you select the text that says new, then you go over here and you double click on it, you can then change what it says. So I'm going to say returned, as if the drum gun came back. And if you click on the shape right here, you can actually change the size of the shape. If you hold control, you can drag out from the sides, and you can just change the size and shape of it to how you'd like it to be. If you have the shape layer selected, then you hold shift and you click on your text. You should select both, then you can resize them and move them around together. So I'm just gonna have it be like this, rotate it a little bit, put it down right here. I'm also gonna reposition my arrow a little bit to make it look a little bit nicer. Something like that should be good. Also, these arrows have a little bit of like a bumpy edge to them, but it doesn't really matter too much because when you're looking at an actual thumbnail on YouTube, it's very zoomed out, so it's not very noticeable. It should be something like this. You can't really even tell. And obviously, this isn't a drum gun. This is a hunting rifle, so we're going to want to change that out. If you go under New Weapon, and you click the little down arrow, you can find where, it is, where the hunting rifle is. You can delete it out of that, and then you can find an image of whatever you want to put in there. So for this example, I want to put in a drum gun. So I'm just going to Google Drum Gun Fortnite PNG. Then once you search it, you just find the image you like, so I think I'm just going to use the first one. And as you can see, since I searched PNG, it doesn't have a background, which just saves a decent amount of time. If it does have a background, you can just cut it out pretty easily. But in this case, it already doesn't, so it just makes things a little bit easier. You can right-click on it, and then save it. 
Then if you're in Photoshop, you can do File, Place Embedded. Once you have it in, you should probably move it somewhere to the top and then just resize it to fit inside of the little box. Position it the way you'd like. And for this one, I don't actually want to say new there because I already have the little arrow thing right here. And this says return, so that shouldn't say new. That just doesn't really make much sense. So actually at our new weapon, I'm gonna click on the new thing and just delete it so it's not there. Something we can do to make it look a little bit better is actually if we have the character in front of the words slightly, it would look a little bit better in my opinion at least. If you're using one of the rendered models, it'll be a lot easier. You can just drag the layer above the text. But in this case, this Iron Man is actually with the background in a single layer. We just quickly make the text invisible so we can see Iron Man a little bit easier. We go down to the layer with Iron Man and we zoom in on him. We can use any selection tool of your choice and just select part of his head. And then if you just make a copy of your selection and then drag it above the text layer and then turn the text layer back on, it looks like the text layer is slightly behind the character. It looks a little bit more dynamic in my opinion. Actually, something else I want to add that I haven't added yet is one of these speed lines layers. I think it helps draw the attention into the middle of the thumbnail a little bit, but you don't have to use it if you don't want to. If you like it the way it is, then of course just leave it that way. But I'm going to bring in normal three, which is the one I use for a lot of my thumbnails. It might start off sized wrong, so you can just kind of resize it until it fits your thumbnail good. Now this obviously looks like a little bit much, so something you can do is bring it beneath a lot of the layers except for the background, which then just already makes it look a little bit better. For your speed lines, make it look a little bit less distracting. You should change it to a blend mode. I like to use overlay, but you can of course use whatever you think looks best for your thumbnail. And it still looks like a little bit much, so you can just lower the opacity a little bit. Maybe like 50% I think looks pretty good for this one. Something to make your image look a little bit more vibrant, just to finish it off, is you can select all of your layers, right click, and then make a group from the layers. Then make a copy of the groups. So you still have your original here, just in case you mess anything up, you can just go back to it. You have a safe copy, so you don't accidentally mess anything up. And then if you go to your copy, you can just right click on it, and then do merge group. And you have a single layer out of that. All you can do with this is you can go under image, adjustments, hue and saturation and then up the saturation a little bit. Makes it look a little bit more vibrant. And of course, if you're doing this on something other than Photoshop, there is almost definitely a way to do things like increase the saturation and whatnot. It's just, you're gonna have to find where that setting is, but it almost definitely has it. Pretty much every software will have a saturation option. I think for this, about plus 40 looks good without being too much. Of course, if you make it too much, it just looks bad. So just make sure you don't overdo it. And I think this looks pretty solid for a thumbnail. What I want to do next is show you some general tips of how to make your thumbnails look good and some things that you shouldn't do. And to do that, we're going to look back at some of my older thumbnails because I've gone through a lot of bad thumbnail phases. I want to start off with this one right here. This thumbnail is not very good at all, which is why I actually very quickly replaced this thumbnail like 30 minutes after I uploaded the video because it just, I just didn't like it. And when it was all zoomed out in the actual YouTube page, it looked even worse. A thumbnail that I think came out pretty bad was this one right here. Now I do think it was good because I used big letters and I used a good font and you have to have a good stroke around it. And then you have to make sure you use a nice bright color for the text. But what I think doesn't work too good about this thumbnail is first of all, the color of the background just doesn't really, it's good because it's a dark background, which makes the text pop out more, but it's just the color doesn't really match very well, especially with the bright blue of the skin. And I think the skin is a little bit zoomed out, but it should be maybe zoomed in a bit more on like the top half of the skin, like this part. To show how these tips actually apply, and to show how much it can improve your thumbnails, I'm going to take one of my old thumbnails that wasn't very good, and redo it to see how much better I can make it, and then I'll show you a before and after. I'm going to do a quick time lapse of me making that, and then I'm going to go over what I changed.
Something I want to quickly point out is if you're using a background from here, I recommend having the background selected. And if you're on Photoshop, you can do filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur, not too sure how to say it. If you're on any other software, this one's definitely another way to blur it. But if, if you're on Photoshop, you can use this method. They'll make it too blurry, but blurry enough to where the character looks in focus, but the background doesn't. As you can see, now I have the finished version of the updated thumbnail, which if we do a quick side-by-side, -side, you can see is significantly better and fixed pretty much all of the issues that I have with the first thumbnail. As you can see, all the dead space was filled in. It's nice big text, it's not like no space between it. I have this little graphic thing right here of a pickaxe crossed out, just so it gives a bit more of an idea of like what's going on. Now that's pretty much going to wrap up the video. If you have any questions, of course, just comment down below, I can answer them, assuming I know the answer, which I probably will, I hope. But if you enjoyed, or this was helpful to you in any way, consider liking and subscribing, because it helps out a lot, and it really helps my videos perform better. And yeah, that's gonna end off this video. Thanks for watching.